I think we can start this webinar now. Uh, good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to this webinar organized by Barcelona Supercomputing Center as a part of the Fusion Health Project. My name is Mary Mansinen, and I am the Fusion Group Leader here at Barcelona Supercomputing Center, and at the same time, the PI of the Fusion Health Project. FusionCAD project brings together several research institutions and universities shown here uh, to establish active fusion community in Catalonia and to carry out R&D in key research areas of fusion reactors such as shown here on this slide. Among our key objectives is to establish technology transfer from the partner institutions to industry develop industrial competencies um, for realization of fusion energy and transfer of relevant know-how. It is really great to see um, so many of you um, at this event. Thank you so much for your participation. After this very short welcome, I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Krisa Domakovsky from the BTEC Foundation share this meeting. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Krzysztof Markowski, as Mary said. I'm working here also in Barcelona and the Fusion Cut project together with Mary and all the other project members we have here. I'm going to moderate this session, which is basically this introduction and afterwards the question and answer. Remember that this webinar will be recorded. We have time until 12.30. Uh, I really encourage you all to make questions. We will have to use Slido, which is slide.do, where you can make your questions. And the number, the number of the event code is FusionCut, so you have to put FusionCut in capital letters. Uh, we really hope we can answer all your questions. However, within Slido, you can vote for the questions that you like most. And then we can prioritize uh, the questions and ask for the questions which have most interest. But I also asked uh, Mikhail and he said that he is more than happy to ask your, to answer, answer your questions you might have. So you can also write an email. So now we come to the really interesting part, which is the presentation of Mikhail Ryasnevich. He is the founder, the chief scientist, and a member of the executive board of Tokamak Energy, and he will give us a, a speech and a talk about, uh, with the title, Faster Fusion Through Innovations. Well, I think the progress we're making towards fusion power is relatively slow. So for those who work on public funded projects in fusion must be a little bit tired of hearing this well-known joke that fusion is always 20 or 30 years away. So the title, Faster Fusion for Innovations, I think sounds really great and interesting. Tokamak Energy published a paper claiming that the fusion power gain depends only weakly on the reactor size. So wow, this is not what many people say. So I'm really looking forward for his talk. Mikhail, the camera is yours, please. Thank you very much. Okay. Can you see my, my screen now? Hello? Yeah, we just see your face for the moment. You just see my face. <laughs> Which is fine, but... Which is fine, but we need, the, we need the screen. Give me a second. Yes. Give me a second, because... We managed to do it a second before. Okay. Screen two. Yes. Now you see my slides. Yes. Hopefully. Yes. And now you see full screen, correct? Correct. Right. Lovely. Then let's start. So my name is Mikhail Grasnevich. I will be talking about faster fusion through innovations. Um, 
Uh, a, few uh, a few words about uh, our company. In my presentation, I will not uh, talk about our company and the history, but uh, of course, if anyone wants to have any details, welcome to ask questions afterwards. So we are a private company. We are funded by uh, private investors and with the help of the government. So um, in my talk, I will actually uh, uh, say some words about uh, the new growing uh, research infusion, uh, which is funded not by uh, public money, but uh, funded by private money. Uh, as you know very well, fusion research is advancing, progress towards fusion power uh, no, is not as good as uh, we would like it. Uh, to have. There are many tokamaks. However, uh, there is also now some privately funded fusion development and common, uh, as you see on the screen, uh, by the way, you see my mouse, yeah? So there are several companies, not many, but uh, the number is growing and common goal of privately and publicly funded fusion research is to develop technology and fusion industry uh, together. At Tokamak Energy, we uh, identified uh, some uh, key technology gaps needed to create a commercial fusion reactor and uh, then use technology road mapping as an approach uh, uh, the chart in our path. So, as I said, um, fusion, uh, private fusion now is um, emerging and, on the, and here you can see a number of uh, companies, uh, more than a half of them are in states and recently F uh, Fusion Industry Association was created, you can see a link if anyone is interested, a couple of years ago. So Fusion Industry Association is an international coalition to uh, join together uh, privately funded fusion uh, just to exchange information and uh, also to uh, en enhance uh, now um, collaboration and contacts with uh, government funding fusion. Uh, so uh, private fusion, so now I'm showing a, a slide of Commonwealth fusion system, another company which is uh, building a, a, a tokamak at MIT. And uh, uh, on the slide, um, it is uh, uh, shown that there are many companies and the list is growing and uh, they're optimizing uh, uh, for things beyond physics uh, uh, because actually uh, uh, to move fast, to move faster than government programs, we need to uh, focus on deliverables and milestones. Uh, we need to save money, of course, uh, and uh, concentrate spending on um, 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 on uh, uh, projects uh, and uh, on everything that is directly connected with uh, activities of this or that company. So, uh, talking about uh, Tokamak Energy, our approach is based on innovative physics and uh, innovative technology. So it is based on the uh, main two I would say innovations, innovation in physics, we are using spherical tokamaks, which are um, quite similar to conventional tokamaks, but younger. Uh, spherical tokamak research started about 30 years ago, and the difference of spherical tokamak uh, from conventional aspect ratio tokamak, that it's actually, it looks like, you see, like a sphere with a uh, quite thin uh, central post. And uh, to create field in the spherical tokamak, the toroidal field, uh, we uh, don't have much space. So we need to find uh, some ways how to build very effective magnets. And uh, another our uh, innovation is uh, use of high temperature superconductors. I will, of course, in my talk, I will discuss all these um, uh, aspects in details. So we believe that combination of spherical tokamak and use of high temperature superconductors uh, will uh, help us to uh, make fusion smaller, cheaper, and to deliver it faster. It is a combination of spherical tokamak shape with high temperature superconductors, which we believe is the key 
uh, development of fusion power in our case. Of course, as you know, there are many approaches to fusion, and uh, but our approach is this. Our principles are a collaboration in development of fusion science and technologies with uh, um, private research and uh, with uh, public funded research. We want to use multiple contact compact devices and demonstrators to validate modeling and progress at a faster pace and lower financial risk. A strong focus on industrial deliverability and uh, cost of the commercial device. The approach has, of course, many common grounds with mainstream uh, tokamak fusion, like ITER, DEMO, like STEP. Uh, we rely on the same physics behind the magnetic fusion concept, but we uh, have a faster way We believe to get to a commercial means that many of today's established technologies will be out of date by the time the fusion technology is deployed. Uh, we understand risks about uh, uh, risks around this development, and uh, we uh, 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 trying to develop the most highly probable uh, technologies. Because in a world where technology advances at even increasing speed, rather than seeking cast iron guarantee that technology is available at the beginning of our journey, we have asked ourselves likely uh, to be present in any projects and so on. So, no, what is innovation? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> recently, uh, there is a uh, UK research and innovation uh, committee and it recognizes innovation as application of knowledge or ideas and so on business and many other uh, sectors in the market must be uh, innovation but it must result variable it doesn't Michael. have to be innovation Michael may I suggest to be that you brand new you remove yep. stop your mm, mm, image the video Can you because we have me? some problems Hello? with the uh, uh -huh. We have some, some problems with the sound, so first we could try that you stop Done. the video. Yeah. Thank you. Can you now speak, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. We seem to have some problems with the connection. Let's see where our speaker, Michael, manages to connect again.
So I, I see that Michael is now connected again. Alba, could you, could you please unmute Michael? Yes, I am unmuted. I can hear you well. <laughs> Great. Now we can hear you, Michael, again. Thank, Let, thank you for coming back. Uh, I'm sorry for the, all the technical problems we have. Uh -huh. do, do you see still my screen? We, we do see your screen, but sh should I try to share your slides? I can uh -huh. try the PDF just to make sure that everything goes No, fine. well, you, you, you can start with PowerPoint. It will be much okay. easier. Let's, let's try. I was now at slide number nine. Yes, let me, let me go there. Um, start sharing PowerPoint. I am at slide number nine. Just a moment. Slide number nine. And from current. Do you, s no, this is not right, but I'm going there. I, I, by the way, I've tried to restart Zoom. Maybe it will help. Okay. So just stop me when you need me to stop. Okay. Nine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, what is innovation? You can see on the screen what is innovation. Yeah. Please click. Yes. Lovely. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, this slide shows Tokamak Energy Technology Roadmark for Faster Fusion. And you see that we have several stages, uh, research and development. We started with uh, uh, some small prototypes I will show. And then uh, we, through stages, we are going to a demonstrator and then we are going to commercial uh, device with very uh, many possible outputs, not only electricity. Next slide, please. So uh, achievements and progress up to date in the company. We started, we've built our first Tokamak, which was called ST25 in 2012. And it was a small Tokamak, uh, plasma pulse was several seconds, up to 20 seconds using microwave current drive. And uh, at one stage, we've installed HTS uh, coils on this Tokamak, as you see. Uh, uh, two coils are HTS coils. Then next year, we managed to build a fully HTS Tokamak with all uh, uh, magnets HTS. And uh, on this Tokamak, we achieved a plasma that lasted more than a day. Practically, it could last long, uh, as long as we wish because it's superconducting magnets. And you see, you can see the um, bright spot. This is the plasma indeed in this machine. And then we moved to the next stage machine, uh, which was called, S which is called ST25. We started construction in 2016. And um, it was the uh, highest field spherical tokamak. And it's still at present highest uh, field spherical tokamak. Uh, in the first campaign, we immediately achieved a, a half a megam plasma currents, very high densities, kilovolt range of temperatures. And uh, we are using, uh, again, novel, uh, quite novel for uh, conventional tokamaks uh, plasma formation, which is called uh, merging compression formation. I will talk about it later. And we achieved more than 400 kiloamps uh, plasma current uh, using this formation without use of a central solenoid flux. And click, please. Yeah. And now we are operating ST40. Uh, uh, a toroidal field of three Tesla. We are commissioning now uh, three Tesla in this tokamak. It is liquid nitrogen cooled coils, uh, all, both poloidal and toroidal field. Uh, recently, we've significantly upgraded uh, power supplies. We installed some new uh, poloidal field coils. We've installed diverter. We've installed more diagnostics and beer shields to protect, uh, uh, no, to uh, shield neutrons coming from this plasma. And uh, uh, also we've installed uh, two neutron be neutral beams, uh, one megawatt each and diagnostic neutral beam. Click, please. So these are our main achievements. Uh, first, fully HTS tokamak. Uh, we also uh, doing a lot of research. I will again show some slides on HTS and we achieved uh, quite a high field of 24 um, uh, Tesla at the coil. 
in pure HTS magnet. Uh, we have published indeed papers showing that tokamaks do not have to be huge to achieve fusion. Uh, and uh, we also increased, managed to increase toroidal field in um, ST40 in a Kappa machine, but uh, still 3 Tesla is quite impressive. And also uh, recently we indeed have shown uh, that improvements in performance with uh, uh, increase in toroidal field really uh, uh, exist. I will again show this. So next slide, please. So uh, next slide. So let's talk about innovations that we are using. So the main innovations are, as I said, uh, the spherical tokamaka solution to compact reactor and to modular approach for fusion power plant. HTS magnet solution for high field, so better performance in economics and magnetic reconnection as formation and heating method. Of course, we also use a lot of uh, quite um, fashionable and modern things like lithium conditioning, lithium diverter we will use. Uh, uh, we want to have low recycling regimes, similar to that being developed on the 3D and other tokamaks recently. Uh, uh, we will have high, speed, high field site EBW launch for startups, current drive and heating. We will uh, use new wall and diverter materials and more, more of course, ideas welcome. And we can adopt innovations. And innovations are indeed easier to test and use in smaller devices that are also uh, cheaper and quicker to build. So um, uh, maybe you've seen a recent interview uh, with um, um, Bigo, Director General of ITER, where he said that all the small projects uh, uh, he can see uh, uh, with very positive attitude. And it's already the success of ITER to stimulate this, like uh, Tokamak Energy and other projects. Uh, design of ITER was set in 2007. We could not change the design every day. We will integrate some progress, but some progress cannot be integrated. No, for example, uh, as you understand, HTS, of course, is the next generation of um, uh, superconductors, but uh, <laughs> it cannot be implemented now in ITER. Uh, we are very pleased to work with uh, Tokamak Energy and other companies as often as possible, he said. We are not in competition. We are complementary. I don't want to eliminate any of them. Uh, we can enrich each other. Click, please. Ah, yes, you're already there. Uh, click, please, yeah? Okay, so recently in the United States, the National Academy of Science has been asked to develop plans for U.S. compact fusion pilot plant, including drawing up a list of the principal innovations needed from the private sector to address our, uh, uh, to address and meet the goal. Uh, click, please. So uh, now I will talk about uh, our innovations in detail. So number one innovation, as I said, is spherical tokamaks. Please click. <laughs> you will need to click a lot. So uh, what is spherical tokamak? Uh, this picture shows the difference between conventional tokamak and spherical tokamak. As you see, uh, uh, in spherical tokamak, uh, particles are spending more time in uh, stable, uh, uh, in a stable part of the plasma at high field site. Click, please. So, uh, indeed, uh, about uh, 25 years ago, uh, uh, Start Tokamak at Kalam uh, proved that indeed spherical Tokamak is a good idea. Uh, we've achieved improved confinement, we've achieved H mode. Click, please. We've achieved highest beta, record beta. Uh, why it is important? Because, as you see at the top, uh, uh, fusion power is proportional to beta square, toroidal field power 4, and volume. So if you got higher beta volume uh, for the same fusion power can be reduced. Click, please. Apparently, the high beta potential of the ST is so great that physics of this device will not determine the size, said Ron Stanbau, uh, director of General uh, Atomic uh, many years ago. Uh, click, please. So, improvements in performance with increased field already demonstrated in first experiments on ST40. Um, you can see on the plot um, uh, iron temperature and uh, total stored energy versus toroidal field. So, we started with very low toroidal field, half a Tesla, and um, our performance was very similar to performance of START, of Globus M, of other tokamaks, confirmed by Arsimovich, Forable, and so on. 
However, at about one Tesla, you can see a bend in this dependence. Something is happening. Something uh, really, um, some threshold uh, we, we've passed. Click, please. And uh, recently, in the last campaign, we even uh, managed to show this uh, much clearer. You see in pink, uh, there is linear dependence with steroidal field, but weak dependence. And somewhere at one Tesla, suddenly very strong dependence, very sharp dependence. Now we are operating at two Tesla, we will operate at three Tesla, we will see whether this will be confirmed. Next slide, please. Some theory. Uh, uh, so, uh, observed sharp increase in uh, temperature and uh, stored energy at one Tesla may be connected with the predicted in uh, uh, gyrokinetic simulations reduction in transport at high toroidal field. So, the plot shows uh, uh, no, I would say, um, uh, uh, diffusivity, mixed uh, length diffusivity in our arbitrary units, uh, depending on magnetic field uh, or low aspect ratio tokamak. And as you see, uh, that at about slow one and a half Tesla, there is a, a very um, big reduction in uh, this uh, uh, diffusivity. And that, that happens because electromagnetic micro-tearing modes are stabilized by toroidal field. And then uh, diffusivity being dominated by electrostatic twisting modes, uh, so at about the, at 10, 10 times uh, or maybe more, um, uh, uh, producing less uh, transport. So, uh, uh, no, as, as I said, uh, the theoretical predictions of the threshold were very close what we indeed observe in uh, ST40 at about one or one and a half Tesla, which is very encouraging. Uh, next, please. So, uh, again, coming back to fusion power, click, please. Yeah, you can see that uh, beta O efficiency uh, has square dependence. Uh, fusion power has square dependence on beta. So that is why uh, volume can be reduced. N click, please. However, engineering of high field ST is a real uh, challenge. Physics is good. So we've demonstrated that beta can be high in spherical tokamaks. No, as you remember, beta in uh, start and STX uh, was up to 40%. So uh, beta in uh, uh, ether in demo is probably 4%. So uh, no, 10 times, maybe not 10 times, but even if you will increase beta by a factor of three, you can reduce plasma volume by a factor of 10. But uh, there is also toroidal field because fusion power depends on toroidal field power of four. Click, please. Next slide. So we need uh, some solution for toroidal magnets. Next. Um, so why we are uh, using HTS? What are the arguments? HTS, the only solution for uh, high field on conductor. You know, low temperatures of preconductors, no, they can maybe achieve about 15 Tesla, but uh, not more. I haven't seen more. Uh, HTS. Uh, can achieve much higher uh, field. Uh, of course, reduction in, cryo, uh, in uh, cryogenic power, because, which is needed for compact reactors, because high temperature superconductors, I, uh, superconductors, I had high temperatures. They can operate up to liquid nitrogen temperatures. No optimum temperature is about uh, 20, 30 uh, uh, degrees Kelvin. So they have very good mechanical properties, good performance of the neutrons, and supply chain is improving all the time. Uh, click, please. So, again, why one HTS? Many years ago, well, ten, nearly 10 years ago, John Last, very famous engineer on JET, he proposed, he was asked a question, what will happen if toroidal field coil in JET will fail? Uh, anything. And he came with a proposal uh, of uh, high temperature superconducting toroidal magnet. Uh, no. Uh, it, is, it was only a proposal, only discussion, no more work was done. But I want to point you, uh, uh, the requirements in the middle, advantages of HTS in, in, in the middle picture, it says that he wants 16 kiloamps uh, uh, no, uh, of uh, uh, system uh, kiloamp uh, per square centimeter. Uh, click, please. 
he was not the only person, of course, who uh, was thinking about uh, HTS for fusion coils. There were discussion, uh, they started uh, at uh, soft conferences uh, years ago, and uh, high temperature superconductors have been considered for ether magnet systems and beyond. Uh, click, please. So um, this uh, is uh, this slide is from um, uh, Federici's uh, presentation uh, at one meeting, uh, um, and um, no, not going into details. Uh, he was saying that um, actually uh, high temperature superconductor uh, could. Uh, help to reduce the size uh, of uh, the magnet and he could see a lot of advantages. So uh, uh, not a lot of advantages at 12 Tesla, the, the first two blocks, but if you're going to 18 Tesla, uh, of course fusion power will be higher, then there is a huge advantage of high temperatures. Hello, next slide please. Yes. So uh, HTS development at Tacomac Energy, the progress, uh, uh, first of all, uh, choice of available tape. We've tested six tapes that are available at the market. We've bought them. They're all good. No, they vary in performance. They all, but uh, actually they uh, are all good. That means that uh, supply chain is improving. Next is, is uh, choice of cable. Again, uh, we uh, need quite high uh, current in the cable. However, many years ago, 10 years ago, cables up to 100 kilohams have been tested at NIFS. We have our own design. Uh, we're also working on uh, joints, on feeds, uh, all uh, has solutions. So uh, we've tested many coils with, uh, uh, we've tested more than 20 coils with uh, 20 Tesla at 20 K uh, Kelvin. Uh, we've done quench studies and uh, quench protection studies. So uh, toroidal field uh, and poloidal field uh, uh, in combination prototype is under construction. Click, please. Yep. So here you see a drawing of, um, uh, no, practically it's a tokamak with 10 Tesla at, uh, uh, at uh, geometrical axis of the vessel. No, uh, first, of course, we want to test it as, um, as a magnet. Whether it will be tokamak or not, it's another story. Uh, click, please. So our uh, magnet laboratory, as you can see on this slide, uh, again, is quite uh, advanced and uh, we are making uh, coils by ourselves. Uh, we have test facilities, instrumentations, and uh, uh, we uh, are uh, testing no, well, not now, coronavirus, you know, uh, uh, put some pressure on us, but we were testing uh, practically one coil per week. Next slide, please. So, uh, uh, we are working on modular, robust and scalable high uh, field HTS magnets. And uh, at the right, you can see uh, one hour of our test magnets and uh, the most right, is this 24 Tesla magnet and 21K. And this is very um, encouraging, it, it's, it's very high. Uh, so at, 20, at 21 Kelvin, it's the record field in uh, high temperature superconducting magnets. Another funny thing, the middle coil is called Franken coil. Uh, there is a, a story about this coil. We wanted to destroy it. We wanted to uh, somehow to, to introduce quench and we couldn't. So we started drilling holes in this coil and only after uh, we had many coils in this, uh, many holes in this coil, then it quenched. So indeed HTS is very robust. Click please. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, uh, so um, uh, we actually achieved up to 300 amps per square millimeter. You remember when I was talking about uh, uh, requirements for jet, it, it was tens of amps per millimeter. We m m managed to uh, demonstrate at least uh, 10 times higher um, uh, <coughs> current in, uh, in the cable. Next, please. 
And uh, another um, innovation, or not innovation, because again, it was invented maybe 50 years ago, it's magnetic reconnection for formation and heating. Next. So magnetic confinement is based on uh, containment of hot plasma and insulation from the wall of the vessel by externally applied magnetic field. But also it is possible to transfer magnetic energy uh, of the steroidal field directly into the plasma, uh, thermal energy with very high efficiency, up to 90%. So using magnetic field not only for containment, but also for plasma heating. And this can be achieved using so-called uh, merging, uh, uh, using reconnections in so-called merging compression formation on spherical tokamak plasma, as it was used on start on Mustin and on tokamaks. Click, please. So reconnection theory has been developed, as I said, in astrophysics in 60s, 70s. According to the theory, click, please. Uh, the prediction is that uh, iron temperature in, uh, increased during reconnection is linear with reconnection field. On this plot, you show a lot of experiments of smaller devices with a lower field, uh, in Japan mainly. And also, you can see uh, results from MAST and START. And uh, uh, blue star is uh, um, result achieved on ST40 already. And uh, if when we will uh, come to uh, full uh, performance of ST40, we hope to achieve temperatures as high as 10 kilovolt just from reconnection. Click, please. Yes. And as you see, first results on ST40 are very encouraging. Here, iron uh, temperature versus reconnection, um, uh, practically reconnection field is showing um, uh, uh, versus plasma current. So uh, you see uh, this uh, uh, parabolic dependence, which is in agreement with theoretical predictions. So we are on the right way. Whether we will achieve 10 kilovolt in ST40, I don't know, but uh, we at least, we are in uh, kilovolt range temp temperatures already. And we increase in toroidal field and poloidal field uh, in, uh, in ST40 this autumn. Next, next slide, please. Yes. Okay, couple of words about what is magnetic reconnection. It was first used on, uh, at column. And uh, you see here uh, waveforms of plasma current, uh, and uh, you see also magnetic reconstruction of this process. First, you see two plasmas around rings, which are uh, coils, which are inside the vessel. Then these two plasmas, they are uh, merged into one plasma, and then we compress it uh, to a central post. So these are three major stages. Uh, click, please. And uh, now uh, you can click on uh, video. Yes, and you can see how it happens. You can see how it performs. So you can see all the stages of, of, of merging compression from two rings at the left to one plasma at the bottom. Click, please. Yes, so plasma counts up to uh, half a megaamp without central solenoid assistance and uh, kilowatt range temperatures have been already demonstrated. Next, please. Uh, so, um, now uh, a little bit of modeling and a little bit of theory. We, uh, to model merging compression, to model reconnection uh, process, we uh, are using the same codes that we are using for uh, neutral beams, uh, for fast particles. Because at the end of the day, uh, what is happening during connection, we are accelerating uh, uh, ions uh, during connection to poloidal fan energy. Uh, so, that means uh, poloidal. Uh, uh, alpha and speed, uh, that means uh, t kilovolt, 10 kilovolt range. And you can see uh, results uh, of orbit simulations uh, for our plasma for 10 kilovolt and for one kilovolt orbit. And uh, then you can see the deposition profile of reconnected ions is quite uh, hollow. Uh, so uh, I click, please. Yeah, and these are results of simulation using TSC code. So now this is full um, uh, code that uses all um, available uh, physics that is used in conventional tokamaks uh, to study, uh, for example, um, uh, from startup and heating and so on. And at the right, you can see uh, results from MAST and from recent results from ST40 that 
are in agreement with uh, this um, um, TSC simulations because TSC simulation uh, shows that indeed the deposition profile and the temperature profile will be hollow. This is what we see at the uh, color picture at the bottom. You can see iron temperature profile on, uh, uh, on mast, evolution green uh, to red. You see it starts with a hollow profile. And uh, to the right, you can see the same hollow profile already observed on ST40. Next slide, please. Now, uh, a, a bit of words about uh, model approach. Uh, this is probably the last <laughs> interesting innovation that we are using. Click, please. So we are working on, uh, uh, on a model design of fusion power plant. Click, please. Um, in this uh, new alternative route, uh, uh, economical feasibility uh, fusion power plant will consist of several low power models and auxiliaries are shared between these models. In all model approach, um, regular necessity maintenance is set offline in a model-to-model -model way, providing very high availability. So imagine you have 10 models, then uh, nine are operational and one is under um, um, maintenance. So with a minimum loss of availability. And this uh, approach uh, permits saving time and resources needed for development. Uh, this, this actually is uh, quite a known approach in nuclear now a lot of uh, work is done on modular approach in nuclear reactors. Click, please. Uh -huh. A modular fusion power plant consists of several compact low power high field spherical tokamak, well, maybe not necessarily spherical tokamak models, but they uh, should be reasonably compact and reasonably low power. Uh, click, please. Model approach uh, combines advantages of economy of scale uh, for conventional part of the plant and the ec economy of mass production for fusion core of the plant. No, the plant is the plant. Uh, the, uh, whether you use modular approach or not modular approach, economics requires gigawatt level of electricity overall from the plant. So at the end, the cost of uh, the capital cost of the plant probably will be the same, but economy of mass production and also uh, what is very important is uh, uh, economy on the way uh, to uh, develop this reactor. Click, please. Yeah, um, uh, is uh, very, very encouraging. Why? No, because, uh, uh, no, as I said, high availability due to reduced duration of the first of all uh, the change in maintenance. Models can be serviced in term, so electricity supply will, not be, ma will be maintained. Units can share startup, uh, for example, gyrotrons, so you can start with the same gyrotron system, one model, then another, then another, then another. Uh, uh, they can share remote access facilities. They can uh, share, for example, hot cell for maintenance because you don't need uh, a gigawatt uh, device like ITER or DEMO uh, to put in a hot cell uh, for maintenance. You are just putting one model. And many small units, of course, is attractive for manufacturers. Sustainability of supply chain is very important. Click, please. No, um, uh, uh, we've done uh, a lot of uh, studies of uh, uh, this model approach, and this plot uh, shows uh, the dependence of uh, uh, neutron wall load and fusion power on aspect ratio. So if you go to very high aspect ratio, to high aspect ratio, you see that uh, neutron wall load is too low. If you go to very low aspect ratio, the fusion power is too high. So you need to be somewhere in between. And uh, the right is one of example of system code calculations with aspect ratio 1.7. And you see it's 170 megawatt uh, um, pile plant, 1.6 meter only. No, uh, physics uh, can be different. We can increase uh, toroidal field from three Tesla. Then probably uh, we performance will be better. But anyway, this is just one of example of system code calculations. Click please. Uh, no, and now I'm coming to conclusion. So conclusions are demonstrations of burning plasma in a compact high field spherical tokamak is the current challenge for fusion, we believe. ST pass to commercial application of fusion can start from a compact uh, device with uh, radius as low as 0.4.5 meter to start with, which were demonstrated in uh, uh, our ST40. And innovations can make fusion sooner and uh, cheaper. So, uh, 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 no, as this is actually the end of my talk, but I want to show you a couple of slides um, where I want to 
uh, encourage uh, uh, collaboration and encourage future um, um, co collaboration work. Click, please. Yeah, and another one. So we are uh, welcome collaboration in very many areas in modeling of um, uh, fusion reactor the components, uh, physics, in modeling of high temperature superconductance, of plasma heating and fast particles, uh, scaling of fusion materials, uh, and so on and so on. So uh, the next slide, please. So we welcome collaboration in the uh, diagnostic system, in uh, tritium, lithium sensors, and uh, 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 all which what with, uh, all things that are connected with blankets, uh, and so on and so on. Another thing is uh, uh, that uh, we are hiring people for employment opportunities. Visit our um, uh, Tokamak Energy uh, site. We are hiring about. Uh, one person a week at present, even <laughs> during these uh, difficult times. Uh, click, please. And th this is the, the last slide I wanted to show. It's the present st status of uh, ST40. You can see uh, at the left, you can see one beam. Then the big uh, beam in front of you is actually diagnostic neutral beam um, uh, from Bootkir Institute. To the right, uh, there will be another beam, which is now under commissioning. And uh, uh, no, you can see at the top, uh, there is a lot of cool, cooling uh, channels uh, for liquid nitrogen uh, to cool our magnet. Now it is closed, the cryostat is closed. So uh, this autumn, we are uh, going to uh, demonstrate three Tesla. And for three Tesla, for long pulse, for one second pulse, we indeed need to cool down our coils to liquid nitrogen temperature. That's it. Thank you very much. Sorry about all these troubles, but now I'm open for questions. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Yes, hello. And Krisha, Alba, could you unmute Krisha again? Okay, now. Okay, thank you very much, Mikhail. I think this was really interesting and impressive, your company, what your company is doing. And I have to say, we still have lots of time for questions and answers because we are not used to people that so fast presenting um, their slide. Um, I can see that the people are not so active on the thing we explained at the beginning. For your questions, please go to the website Slido. It's S L I dot D O. Then you can put on Fusion Cut in, in capital letters, and you can ask your questions there. Um, the first questions, uh, first question I have is that, uh, Michael, um, there are not so many private company, companies dedicated to only fusion technology. Where do you get your funding from? Well, how, how, how can you succeed? Maybe oh, oh, yes, that. very, very good question, of course. No, because, you know, world is spending between two and three billion on fusion every year now. No, part of it, of course, is either construction and so on. Uh, uh, up to now, uh, about a billion plus has been uh, already invested more than a billion into private fusion. So our company, uh, we are um, uh, uh, quite well funded by private investors. The list of our investors is not a secret, it's on the web. And uh, uh, now we have about 115 million pounds so about uh, 150 million dollars invested in our company. It's it's all from private invest uh, investments, but the government helps us with a reduction of the tax. Uh, so we have another um, quite good uh, contribution from the government. We have several grants from the government. Recently, we um, um, received 10 million grant. It's not a big money, but it's reasonably good money uh, to um, uh, no, to develop the diverters and to to, to go ahead with. Uh, some uh, technical uh, advances. And also DOE, American DOE, also is helping out us. It gave about $5 million to Princeton uh, for collaboration with us. So they're not giving money to, uh, to Tokamak Energy, but they are giving money to our collaborators in states. So we are very keen in um, um, no, like in uh, collaborations and so on and so on. We have several grants here in UK mainly we are from the government, mainly we are uh, spending this money 
uh, helping universities uh, do to send students to us to do some research. Uh, we're not getting money directly to Tokamak Energy. We have enough money, but universities they really um, uh, are very thankful um, to um, to the money that are get, uh, getting from um, the government uh, for collaboration with us. Sounds good. Sounds interesting. Is maybe the UK a better place for doing such kind of business within Europe? You know that. I think you uh, I, I'm not completely sure because, for example, in Finland and in uh, I think in Czech Republic as well, if there is a private uh, research uh, initiative, uh, government uh, adds between 40 and 60 percent to the money that they've received from investors. You know, in UK, we, are, we can get up to 30%. Uh, okay. So there, are, I don't know the whole uh, European uh, yes, of uh, course. Uh, 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 rules, but uh, uh, UK is, is good. But, 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 but there are other countries where um, funding is quite good as well. Okay, someone, someone says, um, nice dreams. What is the expected date and schedule for break-even demonstration? <laughs> well, um, of course, it's a very tough question, and of course, it all depends on, first of all, on feasibility and on how good our tokamak will operate. ST40 is a small machine. ST40 is not a machine to demonstrate ignition or anything. ST40 is just uh, a, a tokamak on the way. But uh, uh, we already are um, uh, no, achieving um, kilovolt range temperatures and the goal for us is uh, to achieve um, 10 kilovolt range temperatures no, in, in, in the next year. So after we'll achieve these temperatures, the next step will be to increase density and uh, achieve n uh, fusion conditions. No, if confinement will be better, then we can demonstrate NC tau. In equivalent, we are not using tritium at present. We, our uh, device is designed for tritium, but regulations and so on and so on. Uh, no, we shall see. No, uh, the, the, our next machine will be definitely superconducting machine with tritium. And uh, the main goal of next machine, of course, is to demonstrate break even fully. Wow, that's not bad. Mm. It, it's, it's similar to what Commonwealth, what MIT is planning to do. Yeah. And there are some other uh, companies. Uh, well, there is one um, uh, the company in China, uh, also uh, funded by uh, private money. They also want to build a spherical tokamak uh, to demonstrate break-even. Okay. So we are growing. We are not alone. We, we are very happy that uh, we, are not, we are not the only um, a company that, that is looking for this because uh, competition is a good thing. Yeah, sounds good. More technical questions we have here. Is the neutron flux a problem for the HTS? Ha, very, very good question. Yes, of course, and no. First of all, HTS is much more resilient to neutrons than uh, ordinary superconductor. Uh, there are several reasons for this. Uh, first of all, that actually HTS under irradiation uh, uh, actually works better, uh, improves a little bit. Then what will happen? Of course, at high irradiation, uh, it will uh, be damaged. But the problem uh, at present, what I see, is uh, not the damage of HTS, it's uh, heating of HTS by gammas. And damage of HTS, yes, of course, it, it will be an issue for reactor, so we need very good shielding, but uh, uh, give me insulation that uh, um, sustains 10 to, uh, say, 22. Uh, HTS can sustain up to the uh, fluence up to 10 to 23, probably, but uh, there is no electrical insulation for, uh, for, for, for such neutron flux fluence. So, uh, uh, yes and no. Another advantage is that um, uh, HTS, uh, uh, if it will quench from overheating, it will, uh, the, um, uh, the magnet will not be destroyed with quench protection and so on and so on. We can, we, we've done many, many questions, uh, quenches of our coils and they still operate. So this is another advantage. So we believe that under neutrons, yes, under heating, we may have quenches, but, uh, uh, you know, quench of uh, ether coil is quite a bad thing. Uh, quench 
uh, of, uh, no, it's very expensive and, and so on and so on. If we quench our magnet in one of our prototypes, yes, it is expensive, but it's not as bad as jet or ITER. This is another advantage. Okay, here, so now the questions are coming in. Next one, what is the percentage of magnetic recognition heating contribution to plasma heating the spherical tokamaks at present? Aha, uh -huh. I can answer this question. A lot of work we are doing um, uh, in collaboration with the University of Tokyo, and uh, they have several uh, devices to study reconnections. Uh, they have a tokamak, by the way, another tokamak in Korea um, called West uh, to study reconnections. So, uh, on MUST, we published many papers on reconnection on MUST, we managed to achieve, uh, to achieve up to 90% efficiency. Uh, on uh, start and other devices, efficiency varies from, say, 60% to uh, to 80%. So that's very good uh, efficiency. No, you know, you can measure this efficiency by a very um, a simple comparison. Beta is uh, how much uh, uh, thermal energy you are using compared to magnetic energy, and beta typically is few percent. So it means that 90% of magnetic energy is wasted. So if you can uh, use this magnetic energy to heat the plasma, no, then uh, there is another reservoir for uh, plasma heating. Currently, we are not um, investigating an option uh, for continuously heating of plasma uh, using reconnections. All, it may happen, but it is not our goal because we are using reconnections only for startup. And as I said, we've achieved uh, half a megam plasma current and kilovolt temperatures already uh, using this just reconnection heating. Okay, next one. Is power exhaust and plasma wall interaction a more constraining issue for compact ST than for conventional, let's say, bigger tokamaks? No, um, um, of course, of course, this is an issue. And of course, we are uh, thinking about solutions. For example, we are uh, intensively developing liquid uh, flowing lithium diverter uh, together with Illinois, together with our, our collaborators in UK. However, uh, this is very interesting story. Recently, no, in the, during the last few years, it was shown by Rob Galstone, by Dennis White, by many respect, respected scientists, that actually increase in the size of DEMA doesn't help with uh, diverter load. So, um, we need uh, uh, some uh, very smart solutions for this. Uh, in our case, as, I, as uh, was mentioned, uh, we think that um, efficiency of fusion doesn't depend on science, on size. So we can reduce the size, we can reduce the fusion power. If we manage to reduce the fusion power, then um, uh, also the power going to the vertical will be reduced. So we are uh, talking about 10 or tens of uh, megawatt per square meter. And um, uh, to be honest, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the load that ITER will have uh, on the wall. So one of options for our diverter is just to use ITER tiles that have been tested for 10 megawatt per square meter. I, I do definitely know. And I've heard that probably up to 20 megawatt per square meter. This is enough for our present devices and maybe enough for our next uh, step uh, prototypes. For fusion reactor, yes, we need uh, probably uh, liquid uh, uh, metal um, diverters. Yes, it is an issue. It's a very interesting challenge. Okay. Concerning the non-isolated coils, which is the time constant to achieve the steady operating field expected for the T-coil? No, um, the, um, I, I'm not sure that this is an issue of uh, just uh, uh, non-insulating coils or partly insulating coils. No, uh, <laughs> interestingly, I, I will answer uh, uh, completely from another perspective. You know, if we are using uh, RF or uh, microwaves to start up, um, the start up cannot be fast. It will take seconds or tens of seconds to achieve high currents if we are using gyrotrons for startup, electron cyclotron. So uh, uh, time scale of startup and time scale of uh, getting uh, current into the coil, no, they actually they don't contradict each other. I don't, uh, I cannot give you uh, numbers uh, because 
uh, no, if you will increase the speed, of course you will have AC losses, of course you will have extra heating. We uh, 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 no, uh, in our experiments, we of course we are not rushing up uh, with current ramp up. Uh, then, of course, there are questions about how can we use um, uh, uh, HDS, uh, for example, in feedback coils and so on. Yes, this is an issue. And uh, to be honest, uh, to answer this question, we need to build uh, real prototypes because it all depends on configuration of toroidal field. It, it, it's not just uh, uh, how much AC losses can be sustained. No, because there are stresses and so on and so on. That is why we are building practically a tokamak with all HTS coils uh, with up to 10 Tesla fields uh, at magnetic axis. So we know that uh, HTS can sustain more than 20 Tesla and uh, on, on the coil. So 20 Tesla probably is good number for uh, next step devices. But no, but uh, that is why we're experimenting with this. I can see the question and answers getting more animated. We have a question from Albert, which is the most wanted question. So we are really keen to know about that. He asked, uh, platforms or codes are you using for the multi-physics modeling? Do you make usage of supercomputers for your modeling efforts? <laughs> we, we dream about it. Uh, no, at present, no, of course, when we were doing uh, GSC simulations, uh, kinetic simulations. I think it was done on uh, Japanese computers clusters, but uh, um, uh, we are now, we have good collaborations with Oxford University and Cambridge University. They are quite advanced in using supercomputers, but this is the next step in our, I would say, uh, development. We really want to use uh, um, supercomputers and grids uh, to run uh, complicated codes, both for plasma physics and uh, for material studies. I think for material studies, it's even tougher. I'm not an expert in um, uh, in material numerical material studies, but what I've heard that it's quite tough. Yes, we are going to use, and we are very welcome uh, um, to collaborations in this area with anyone. Good, good to know. Would you take into account to increase the magnetic field given the fixed size of your tokamak? Can the magnetic field increase with no limit to boost power? I don't understand exactly the question. We, um, no, you know, a field, a toroidal field in, in tokamak is uh, constrained not by physics, it's constrained by, um, uh, by magnets, by ability to build magnets. So what was exactly the question? Um, the question is, what, what do you take into account to increase the magnetic fields, given a fixed size of your tokamak? Ah, okay. Um, no, you know, Ignitor uh, uh, or Alcator C, uh, Alcator C, the device that existed, uh, used, I think, up to 14 Tesla toroidal field. So, uh, in tokamaks, uh, and no, and C mode and FTU, they are using seven, they were, were, sorry, using seven, eight Tesla field. So high field is not, uh, doesn't frighten us in a tokamak. Uh, however, we've done some transport analysis of what would happen to Ignitor if we would reduce uh, aspect ratio. And uh, it was done at Kurchatov Institute by a uh, uh, group of Boris Kutyev. And it's a very interesting result. They uh, um, actually they've shown that if you will reduce aspect ratio to 1.6, 1.5, 1.6, you can reduce toroidal field from required for Ignitor 11 Tesla to 5, 6 Tesla with the same performance. And 5, 6 Tesla, no, you know, it's not, again, it's not an issue for Tokamaks. Okay. Does the AST concept admit a wide enough breeding blanket or magnet? Should be also closer to plasma, avoiding the needed space? Uh, uh, well, we, uh, you know, we are, we are now in ST40, we are so far away from blanket and so on. However, uh, we again, we are collaborating with uh, um, Japanese colleagues, with other colleagues on possible uh, uh, possible configurations of the blanket and uh, we see blanket uh, as a part of uh, for example shielding for HTS coils for outer limbs so fortunately in ST 
only about 10% of neutrons are going to the central post. So the central, uh, the blanket at the central post probably is not as efficient. We don't probably need it. We are losing 10%, so what? However, there is an issue, of course, of uh, uh, tritium breeding. And uh, uh, here uh, there are challenges. Again, uh, we, uh, for a small prototypes, uh, we can buy tritium uh, because we, we need only a few grams of tritium but in the future we should resolve this issue and there are several solution, solutions from um, efficient breeding blankets to for example building a, sp a specific neutron source maybe also based on spherical tokamak or on accelerator just to breed uh, uh, just to, to produce uh, tritium to use nuclear reactors to produce tritium at present it's quite expensive so I haven't heard about any new projects of nuclear reactors to, uh, for tritium breeding. So we need to invent uh, uh, something um, in fusion. No, uh, we shall see. Maybe neutron source based on a spherical tokamak uh, may be efficient. We, again, we've done calculations how much tritium can be breeded uh, by a tokamak, uh, well, about one meter size. And it comes up to two, three kilos a year. So that's quite an efficient breeder. So may, maybe we don't need um, as much breeding blanket as needed for demo. Yeah. For conventional demo. Yeah, maybe then that fits with the next question more or less. When do you envisage achieving tritium self-sufficiency? Uh -huh. No, I, I think I've answered this question. No, yeah. we don't have a solution to achieve uh, self-sufficiency. No. Uh, we... Uh, uh, no, uh, to be honest with you, I haven't seen uh, any proposals for self-sufficient blankets in the world because when people are demonstrating uh, proudly uh, efficiency above one, I used to ask a simple question. Okay, you've achieved above one, but what about losses? What about other issues? And then the question is, uh, the answer is, well, we need probably 1.2, 1.3 uh, really to have self-sufficient self tritium breeding uh, uh, blanket. No, we don't know. We are, again, very welcome uh, for collaborations on this issue. And uh, uh, no, uh, spherical tokamak has some advantages because the ratio of surface to volume is good for blanket. So we can um, uh, utilize geometrical um, uh, <coughs> effects of spherical tokamak uh, to improve blanket uh, performance. So that's another thing. Okay. Do you use stacked tapes for cabling HDS or more complex architectures? We are using, uh, well, uh, as, as I've shown in my, in my slide, we are using tapes. We are combining these tapes in, uh, in pancakes uh, of several tapes and uh, with uh, low insulation between. So, uh, no, no, again, this, I'm not... Uh, 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 the best expert in HTS, but we've published papers, we've presented our results at, at conferences. So um, uh, the advantage of using our approach, uh, well, the, the very pragmatic advantage is that to produce these uh, cables, we don't need very long tapes. We don't need kilometers long tapes. We can use 100 meters long um, tapes uh, to make our cables. And 100 meters long tapes is not a big problem for uh, current industries. It's a, the problem is to, to have very long uh, tapes. Unfortunately, we don't need very long tapes. Okay. What's the peak toroidal field for the ST reactor? Can mm, toroidal field magnet protect uh -huh. at this high level of field and current yeah. lower HTS yeah. current density? We are uh, working on this intensively. It's very uh, important uh, question. So, no, we believe that we, uh, to make a reactor, well, no, reactor is, is another story, but even demonstrational device, uh, to make demonstration device, we need at least 20 Tesla on the coil. And we've demonstrated possibility of 20 Tesla on HTS cable, on HTS coil. But, as I said, we need to build a bigger prototype. So after we'll build this 10 Tesla prototype, uh, 10 Tesla at magnetic axis, not at, at the coil, yeah? So the coil, of course, is higher. Uh, after, after this, 
we will uh, start designing and testing coils for higher field. So, no, uh, I guess that uh, our uh, toroidal fields for reactor are uh, no, about five, four Tesla, what we see now. So, of course, the higher field, the better, but uh, uh, four, five Tesla looks feasible. Okay. Which type of HTS cable configuration are you using? Wait a second. Uh, what type of HTS tape or what type of configuration? Cable configuration. HTS cable configuration. Are you cable, yes. Uh, just parallel. So we are not uh, using uh, uh, no, what was proposed uh, years ago. We are not using um, um, <coughs> uh, no, uh, um, we don't need twisted, for example, cables. Uh, we are okay with non-twisted cables. We are using the fact that uh, in a spherical tokamak, uh, toroidal field uh, in the central post is, is uh, uh, very uh, uniform. So we can manage uh, not to twist cables in the central post. Uh, no, because HTS, it likes, uh, uh, it doesn't like perpendicular field. It's okay with a parallel field and the difference in critical current can be about factor of 10 for perpendicular field and for um, uh, uh, parallel field. So at present for the core, we don't need twisted cables. For PF coils, we can think about it. Uh, twisted cables, they exist. How do you detect quench in your HTS coils? Oh, <laughs> very interesting. And uh, of course, there is advantage and disadvantage uh, of HTS, uh, uh, talking about quench. <laughs> the, the advantage is that it doesn't actually, uh, uh, the quench is not a disaster. Uh, we started our HTS research on a small tokamak in Prague, Golem tokamak, where we built the first HTS PF coil for a tokamak and put it in liquid nitrogen and operated it and we had hundreds of quenches and, and, and coils uh, still were okay. Uh, the problem of, uh, so it's not a problem of a quench itself, the problem of uh, detecting quench because in uh, LTS the quench is quite fast. So um, you need a very good uh, diagnostics and uh, uh, you need to uh, stop uh, to do something if the quench happens. And the main idea is not to stop the quench, but to prevent the quench happening. In HTS, uh, as HTS is a little bit more tolerant to quench, the time scale of the quench is much slower. And uh, um, uh, you see, uh, uh, we cannot detect it at the very beginning of the quench. And when it goes already to hotspots, it's already too late. <laughs> so it's good and bad. No. This is the subject of future studies. But detection of a quench in HTS is a specific uh, interesting subject we are trying to quench. As I said, uh, when we wanted to destroy a coil by the quench, we could not. We started drilling holes in it. So what innovation in plasma facing materials do you foresee in spherical tokamaks? Um, difficult question because, of course, currently we are using and 316 and we're using uh, in canal conventional no we're using uh, molybdenum for diverter plates at present and so on so we are actually looking for new materials this is another very important direction of our research we need to we need to have new materials no there are several uh, ideas uh, uh, that people are coming to us with no, like uh, using some uh, 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 boronite and no, well, uh, and some combination. No, typically when we are talking to material people, uh, they are saying we will uh, ambitiously saying that we will uh, give you any material you wish, give us some money and some time. <laughs> so uh, th th that's a very important. Um, um, the direction of research. Fortunately, it is not our specific issue uh, because, as I said, uh, what we are looking, we are looking at 10 megawatt, maybe 20 megawatt per square uh, meter uh, of heat and a couple of megawatt uh, 
uh, per square meter of neutron load. So this is the same for uh, all tokamaks. Interestingly, that uh, economy of reactor, of fusion reactor, practically depends on the neutron load on the wall. There is a direct uh, link. So as I understand, about two megawatt per square meter is a good uh, for commercial reactor. So it is not only our issue, it's an issue for the whole fusion community and we were very, 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 very keen uh, in collaboration on it. Yeah. Um, a question about the Fusion Industry Association. Um, how do private fusion enterprises collaborate through the Fusion Industry Association? Is there a shared database or fund? Uh, well, the question is also because I know that in Europe has been movements for, for always trying to make a fusion industry association, which is not that easy. I understand uh -huh. this industry association is based in the US, am I right? Yes, well, uh, uh, well, uh, it is not just US because we are there and uh, other companies are there. No, uh, uh, the more private fusion companies, the more need for uh, no, some um, platform for collaboration, for discussions. Um, currently, there are regular meetings of fusion uh, of these associations, typically in states, uh, no, well, now, re now remote. So it works. But um, no, when we are talking about um, private fusion and private funding and fusion, the last soft, um, last year I've been to, uh, we've calculated that about 60 or 70 percent of presentations were actually uh, done by uh, pr by industries, by private companies. No, maybe in collaboration with uh, with universities, with with uh, national labs, but uh, there are many examples uh, how um, uh, in Europe uh, private companies are already contributing uh, to, to ITER and to development of fusion. Yeah. You, you, you showed us your, your slide about the collaboration with you. Are you working currently with any company from here, from Barcelona, from Spain? Do you have any ties to here? You, you look no. for something special. No. How can we collaborate with you? <laughs> it's very easy. First of all, uh, the answer is of course yes, because all our, most of our power supplies are made by HEMA. Um, and uh, we even uh, even in these difficult times we have uh, hammer people uh, uh, at our site working uh, on commissioning of our power supplies because they extend from quarantine and uh, we are collaborating with uh, University of Seville we actually donated them uh, a, a kit to, to build a small tokamak which inspired a lot of activities there and uh, at the soft which is coming you will see several presentations on their plans for uh, civil spherical tokamak. Uh, we are uh, collaborating, uh, well, a little, well, I, I want more of course, with TG2 because we have several um, common um, interest because TG2 also is you no know, like they're using pellet injector which we are going to use very similar Oak Ridge pellet injector they are using um, uh, liquid lithium uh, which again we're interested so th th there are many 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 areas in uh, uh, for collaboration and in, in Spain of course as well in uh, at, at Barcelona uh, computational physics we really we cannot afford we don't, well, we have good theoreticians, but uh, we, we cannot afford uh, to put more uh, people uh, into computational physics. We would rather collaborate with uh, other institutions on this. Are your investors more focused on a full commercial fusion power plant or the generation of IP and spillover uses of the technologies you are developing? Uh, both, both, because when I, no, I was showing uh, one slide that our final product is not only electricity, but uh, propulsion, uh, heat, hydrogen, uh, isotopes and so on. However, of course, electricity production, no, you know, it's the trillions and trillions uh, every year, while, uh, for example, isotope production is hundreds of millions. It's still significant, but it's not billions, it's not trillions. So our investors are, uh, interestingly, uh, some of them are just uh, very enthusiastic about uh, green energy and fusion. 
And they look at our company, how we are growing, how we are fulfilling our milestones, our shares are going up very uh, well, quite quickly. So they are very happy with this. Uh, no, you know, uh, we cannot claim that we will soon start uh, making reactors one after another. Uh, to make a reactor, we need to establish fusion industry, and that's the, uh, the task for the whole fusion community to, to support and to establish, actually, to make fusion industry work. So uh, who will build first fusion um, reactor and when? It, it depends also on, on many, many things and on the market as well. Um, the way from a first nuclear reactor in, um, in states to um, actually grid of nuclear reactors took 15 years. So, uh, you know, ITER and DEMO also will take you know, at least uh, 20 years uh, to, 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 to show feasibility of, of reactor. So in our case, even if we will build the first model quicker, uh, it doesn't mean that the first um, commercial reactor uh, <laughs> we can build much faster because there are many issues, regulations, uh, no, which we discussed. Okay, two more questions, one technical, more, one more general one. Is there a possibility of aluminium replacing 316? I don't think so, personally. Uh, there are two reasons why we don't like aluminium. Uh, first of all, aluminium is not very good vacuum uh, compatible material. And second, aluminium doesn't like neutrons because when you irradiate, when you put neutrons on aluminium, I think there are some isotopes that are nasty. We were looking at aluminium uh, coils, liqu uh, liquid nitrogen or liquid helium cooled aluminium for coils instead of copper coils. There is a better solution, uh, beryllium, of course, but I am not sure about aluminium. Okay. Do national labs provide enough support to the fusion private sector? No. <laughs> no, we, we want more. We want more. Uh, no, uh, yes and no. As I said, uh, DOE uh, encouraging uh, Princeton Oak Ridge uh, to collaborate with us and they're gi giving them money uh, and uh, they are spending efficiently this money um, um, to collaborate with us, but not only with us, with, uh, with MIT, with Commonwealth and so on. So uh, what we want more. Uh, Tok uh, Tokamak Energy is not an academic uh, institution and we don't want to be academic institution. Our goal is not research. Our goal is uh, building, development. Uh, please give us new regimes, new ideas, uh, new technologies, and we will build it. Uh, we've proved that we can do it quite efficiently. So uh, this is our strength. Uh, in, uh, when we are talking about science, diagnostics, research. Uh, no, um, again, we've built a small Tokamak ST25. Where it is now? Now it is in Denmark. And um, there is a very interesting research is ongoing on this machine. Very small tokamak, but tens, twenty second of plasma uh, pulse in a small tokamak. Uh, uh, not many small tokamaks could could uh, uh, could be proud of such pulse durations. Very interesting research. We um, uh, we've built HTS tokamak. Now it is in Science Museum in London. <laughs> but, but again, if anyone was interested in running it. It's okay, it's not damaged, it's there. So uh, we prefer uh, to do development, to build machines. Uh, what will happen to ST40? We're already uh, talking to several people, no, well, several people are coming to us, asking this question, what will happen to ST40? We are saying, when we'll finish our program, it will be uh, no, like free uh, to be used by, um, uh, <coughs> by academic research. We have just the last question before we close. Um, at which fraction of your cable critical current do you power your coils? Uh -huh. well, yes, good question. No, um, you know, uh, we cannot go, well, very technical question and uh, uh, please write uh, emails to um, uh, uh, Rod Bateman and uh, others who are doing HTS research. Uh, the quick uh, answer is we are not uh, going to more than whatever 70% uh, 
uh, of critical current, we would rather be uh, safe uh, with a low critical current. It's not actually the critical current which is the main problem. The main problem uh, is mechanical properties and so on and so on. So uh, this also is a, is a big constraint of, of use of HTS, although it is better than LTS, but still it's constrained if you want to go to higher field. Not only the critical current. Okay. At the end of the day, we can operate at liquid helium and critical current at liquid helium is two times higher or, or than at 10 or, or 20 um, Kelvin. So it's not just the critical current. There are stresses, strains and so on. But please ask, ask uh, our guys directly. They, they, they will share okay. information. So thank you very much, Mikhail. I think this was a really very interesting presentation. And I also think the question answer has been very interesting. I could see at the end, everybody was more animated to, to ask questions. Um, I think uh, the example of Tokamak Energy is tremendous and, and the work you've done so far is incredible. I really wish you lots of success and hope you can come up with more solutions and we can collaborate more with all the people here listening. Thank you very much for everybody listening. Uh -huh. And I want to thank uh, yeah. you for organizing this meeting. Uh, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to start discussions, to start collaborations. So thank you very much for inviting me and uh, giving me a chance uh, to talk about physics. I, I haven't spoken about physics much, but uh, I'm open for any discussions. My email is known, so please come and ask. Next time we can travel again and you come to Barcelona, I would like to invite you and we, we can talk about this in more detail. I hope to see you. <laughs> Yes, I, let's hope that everything will, be, will, will go very yeah, good. Yeah. Will be soon, I hope. Um, I also want to thank everybody listening here. Um, you know, this was the second webinar we did. We did the first one also very interesting with Angel Ibarra. And so we are working already maybe on a third one. So stay tuned, um, keep your eyes open and your email especially. And uh, everybody, you're welcome to join us with this project to ask whatever question you have or proposal to improve anything more. Thanks very much for listening and have a nice week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.